Welcome to the Understanding Asthma Research video series brought to you by the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America's Paper Project, promoting asthma, patient engagement, and research. This segment will cover asthma treatments. I'm Dr. Michael Pistoner, an allergist at Mass General Hospital for Children. I'm here to talk to you about the importance of patient engagement in research and how you can help researchers ask the questions that are important to you. Together, we can improve the lives of the people in our communities. After watching this video series, you will have a basic understanding of asthma, be able to recognize some of the common symptoms and triggers, learn more about uncontrolled asthma and asthma attacks, and be familiar with common treatment methods. You'll also understand why it is essential for those with asthma and their caretakers to be involved in asthma research. After watching this segment, you will learn how participation in asthma research can change and improve treatment now and in the future. Successful asthma treatment involves many elements. Understanding symptoms, warning signs, and what happens during an asthma attack assists you and those around you to respond in the most helpful way. Identifying your asthma triggers and making environment or lifestyle changes can minimize them and reduce asthma episodes. Communicating with your medical teams and other supporters, such as family or friends, lets you surround yourself with people who can aid your efforts to have your asthma under control. Even though there isn't a cure for asthma, you can take steps to control it. Regularly discussing and updating your asthma action plan with your healthcare provider ensures that you're taking quick relief or long-term controller medicines at the doses and times best for you. If you don't have an asthma action plan, download one by going to AFA.org. Take it to the next healthcare provider appointment to work on it together. Unless your asthma is very mild, chances are you have prescriptions for at least two different medicines. The more you understand about what those medicines do, how to take them correctly, and why they help, the more likely you are to use them correctly. Although there are some potential side effects from taking asthma medicines, the benefits of controlling your asthma outweigh the risks. Discuss each of your asthma medicines with your doctor to learn more about their side effects. Always take your asthma medication as prescribed. There are two kinds of asthma medicines. The first are called quick relief medicines. They help relieve asthma symptoms when they happen by allowing the airways to open up so air can flow through them. You usually take quick relief medicine when asthma symptoms occur. If you're using quick relief medicines more than two days a week, you should talk to your healthcare provider about your asthma control to see if you need to make changes to your asthma action plan. The second type are called long-term control medicines. They help prevent and control asthma symptoms. You may take this type of medicine every day for best results. Quick relief medicines help relieve asthma symptoms when they happen by acting to quickly relax the tight muscles around the airways so air can flow through them. Let's review the different types. Short acting beta agonists are inhaled. They quickly relieve asthma symptoms by relaxing the smooth muscles around the airways and decrease the swelling that blocks airflow. These medicines are the first choice for quick relief of asthma symptoms. Anticholinergics are also inhaled, but act slower than short acting beta agonists. They open the airways by relaxing the smooth muscles around the airways and reduce mucus production. Combination quick relief medicines are available. These contain both the anticholinergic and short acting beta agonists. The combination comes in an inhaler or a nebulizer for inhalation. Don't forget to talk to your healthcare provider about revising your asthma action plan if you're using your quick relief medicines more than two days a week. The goal is to have control of asthma to prevent asthma attacks before they happen. For that, you may be using a long-term control medicine. Let's review the different types of long-term control medicines that help prevent and control asthma symptoms. Inhaled corticosteroids prevent and reduce airway swelling. They also reduce mucus in the lungs. These are the most effective long-term control medicines available. Inhaled long-acting beta agonists open the airways by relaxing the smooth muscles around the airways. 
If this medicine is used, it should always be taken in combination with an inhaled corticosteroid. Combination inhaled medicines are available as a convenient way to take inhaled corticosteroid and long-acting beta agonists together. Leukotriene modifiers reduce swelling inside the airways and relax smooth muscles. They come in pill or liquid form. Chromalin sodium is an inhaled non-steroid medicine that prevents airways from swelling when they come in contact with an asthma trigger. Theophylline comes as a tablet, capsule, solution, or syrup taken by mouth. It opens the airways by relaxing the smooth muscles. Oral corticosteroids like prednisone come in pill or liquid form. They may be prescribed to treat asthma attacks that don't respond to other asthma medicines. They may be used as long-term therapy for people with severe asthma, but can have significant side effects. There are now other options called biologics for people with severe asthma. Biologics are shots or infusions given every few weeks. They target a cell or protein in your body to prevent airway inflammation. They can be very expensive treatments and are usually only prescribed if other asthma medicines have not controlled your asthma. But the side effects for the biologics may be less than long-term use of oral corticosteroids and so may be a safer option for people with severe asthma. Asthma is different for everyone and new therapies are being investigated. In order for new treatments to become available, drugs must undergo a series of tests and trials before they're approved. It is important for patients to be involved in the research process to help create the treatments that are needed. As you live with asthma, you are researching and learning every day. Breaking news related to asthma research, care, and treatments will be shared in sound bites on the radio, brief medical segments on TV, or in newly published research findings on websites or in newsletters. Anyone diagnosed with asthma is part of research data. For example, people with asthma are anonymously counted in county, state, and nationally reported data. Those using a particular control or quick relief medication may report side effects. Those using a particular inhaler or device may have provided feedback that leads to redesign. Hospitals are required to track and report data that demonstrates how they're doing with providing care to patients with asthma. They monitor the number of emergency room visits for asthma and the number of days patients admitted with asthma stay in the hospital. While you continue to learn more in order to live your life without limits, you and your healthcare team may participate in current research, pay close attention to asthma research outcomes and assist in designing future asthma research projects. By staying closely connected to asthma research, you will ensure your asthma action plan is providing the best and most innovative care for you. If you're interested in participating in asthma or allergy clinical trials, ask your healthcare provider, contact a local asthma or allergy specialist or academic center, or visit afa.org, clinicaltrials.gov, or pcori.org. Learn how to explore, be involved, and influence the future of asthma care in our video series for understanding asthma research. This presentation has been brought to you proudly by Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America with funding by the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, PCORI.